so we are looking at uh, the objectives of an audit. Why do we need to carry out audit? What does law, what does law say about uh, auditing? We are saying that we are required to draft a report which captures our opinion. That's requirement number one, uh, under statutory objectives. Then number two, we are capturing other legal matters, which includes that we indicate <laughs> whether we received all the information and the explanations deemed necessary for the purpose of audit. We also report whether we received sufficient returns, whether we received sufficient returns from the branches that we never visited. As auditors, we are allowed to sample. Sampling we are graded by is a number 530, all the sampling, but you're not required to get all these data. Right? Hey, when we move next semester to advanced level, it's compulsory that you get these data right. But as for now, you need not. But if you get them, better for you. Yes, it's not compulsory. You don't need to clamp them. But if you get them right, we are in good. So we are saying guided by ISA 530, we go ahead to sample. So the client may be having like 10 branches. And because of time constraints and cost constraints, you are not able to visit. <laughs> you are not able uh, to visit all the branches. So you sample a few. You sample a few. Then uh, the others who you will not visit, they send some returns to you concerning their status, concerning their financial position. So you are reporting whether you receive sufficient returns from these branches that you never visited. Then Loma number three, guided by ISA number 320, we always report whether the financial statements have been presented fairly in all material, material respect, material respect, that all material aspects have been recorded in the financial statement. This is captured in international accounting standard number one. International accounting standard number one, which discusses preparation and presentation of financial statements, have got an element of accounting concepts where we have materiality. So IAS number one requires accountants when preparing financial statement to ensure that they capture that which is material. ISA 320 requires auditors to report whether the financial statements have been presented fairly in all material respect. Has it been presented fairly in all material respect? Roma number four, we report whether the books of accounts have been prepared as per the requirements of the Companies Act in the manner so required. Has the books of accounts been prepared as per the, uh, as per the guidelines of the Companies Act in the manner so required? Roman number five, uh, uh, we report whether the books of accounts, the, uh, the financial statements are in agreement with the books of accounts. Uh, by this we mean, eh? What's the cycle when you're preparing the financial statement? We start by, we get information from source documents, source documents. After source documents, we prepare books of original entry. After the books of original entry, we prepare journals. We prepare journals. After the journals, we prepare the trial balance. After the trial balance, we prepare the financial statement. So what we are reporting here is whether these financial statements are as far this books of accounts and records that they have been prepared from the source documents that's very very important and loma number six uh we are reporting whether the books of accounts portray a true as they portray a true and fair view do the books of accounts portray a true and fair view later in this lesson we'll be asking ourselves what do we mean by true what do we mean by fair because companies act is so silent about what true and fair means. Yet that's one of the primary thing we need to report, whether the books of account portray a true and fair view. That is under statutory objectives. Writing a report which contains our opinion and then capturing uh, the other legal matters components uh, in our report. Kitambo, we used to say, that we capture the contents of the seven schedule to the Companies Act. All these are contents of the seven schedule in the Companies Act. But remember, we have a, a, a reviewed Companies Act. Eh? We no longer talk of Companies Act Cap 46. We talk of uh, Companies Act of 2015. Companies Act of 2015. Iribadirishwa. Nani hapo kwamba? Mtu moja anaweza kumbua kampuni. 
in the previous one, one person would not have answer. Yes. So, but they still remain the contents of the seventh schedule. I'm saying this just in case the examiner quotes seventh schedule to the company's action. You are like, hey, Clement, my name, Pana. They are the contents of the seventh schedule when you're making reference to the company's act cap 486. Any question? What about secondary objectives? <laughs> secondary objectives, we say, they are not required by law. They are just, they're not compulsory. They are just incidental. They are not compulsory. They are just incidental. The law does not require us to perform them. But they are desirable. They are desirable. If you do them, if you uh, achieve them, then well and good. But if you don't, it's not a crime. It's not an offense because it's not a requirement of law. They include number one, guided by ISA number 240, a prevent, prevent, detect, and correct errors and frauds. Is your case your management to shake him? Yes. See your case your auditor. Sorry for that. See your case your auditor. They are not required by law to prevent, detect, and correct errors, frauds, irregularities. That's another misconception. That's another area we have an expectations gap that people out there think that auditors are there to look for errors, frauds, irregularities. Auditor is coming. No, 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 no. Ours is just to examine the financial statement, write a report which captures our opinion. <laughs> then we capture this explicitly in the report. This is just an incidental objective. But ISA 240 is clear and categorical that this responsibility is vested with management. It is management who should, who should put in place mechanisms to prevent, detect, and correct errors, frauds, irregularities. <laughs> number two, guided by ISA number 260, you're supposed to prepare a management letter. This is a letter of internal, a letter of internal weaknesses, letter of internal weaknesses, yes? that when you are auditing, you come across lots of weaknesses, yes? <laughs> you may realize that uh, the client issues a, uh, a hard-written receipt. That's a weakness. It can easily be altered, yes? You realize that the client has not properly segregated duties. It's a weakness. Fraud can easily be perpetuated when there's no proper segregation of duties. You may realize that, you may realize that the accounts clerk are not competent. Yes, they are not competent enough to be able to prepare the financial statement. As such, it's a weakness. So you prepare a management letter, which is still known as a letter of internal weaknesses or letter of comments or post audit letter or a recommendation letter capturing the weaknesses that you've come across, the risks associated with those weaknesses and your recommendations on how these areas of weaknesses can be improved to prevent recurrence of issues that arise as a result. Number three, number three, we report on three E's. Three E's, three E's. This relates to economy, efficiency, and effectiveness. Economy, efficiency, effectiveness. Yes, economic aspect. We are advising the client, we are advising the client on how they can be economical. They can be economical by taking advantage of economies of scale. Producing in large quantities, we know you benefit from economies of scale. For as we check how they are doing their procurement and purchases, because they need to ensure they only buy that which is needed then at the uh, uh, prices which are reasonable in the market. That's being economical. So if you realize that they're buying things at an exorbitant price, you can always advise them how they can take advantage of uh, uh, better prices. Issues of efficiency. Efficiency. What's efficiency? We talk of an entity being efficient if they are using minimum output to get maximum Yes. What's minimum? What's maximum? Minimum resources, for instance, to get maximum returns. Yes. That's that's when you talk of efficiency. Yes. We advise them. 
how can they en enhance their uh, the efficiency with regard to production, with regard to sales, with regard to management? Yes, we advise them on the efficiency aspect. Then effectiveness, we always have internal control systems. We have systems, ICSs. We'll be discussing them later, guided by ISA number 315. These controls are intended to achieve some objectives, to prevent fraud, prevent errors, to safeguard the assets. Are they achieving the intended objectives? If yes, they are effective. If no, you advise them on how they can be effective. So three is related to uh, economy, efficiency, effectiveness. It is a topic in a public sector audit. Public sector audit. Yes, public sector audit has got three types of audits. We have financial audit. We have compliance audit. We have operational audit. Operational audit, we talk of the three E's. We talk of the uh, three E's. Plus number four. <laughs> number four, we, uh, we have an obligation to report on uh, any inconsistency. Any inconsistency in other reports in other reports, e.g. directors, e.g. directors report, e.g. directors report, e.g. directors report. What you are saying uh, about directors report we always see directors reading some reports, and especially when they have done some reporting. Be they, be they at the uh, end of the year, you'll, you'll see them in business news reading about how the company has performed. They've been able to record increase in, prof, uh, in sales by or revenue by 12%, reduction in expenses by whatever percentage, and so on. So as an auditor, you don't have any responsibility with regard to director's report or even chairman's statement. But if you detect any inconsistency, that's when your responsibility as an auditor comes in. Because you detect it, you're supposed to report it to the shareholders. Report to the shareholders in case of any inconsistency. Because the directors can always uh, perform what I, I mentioned about uh, widow directing, exaggerating on performance, which is not the real, uh, the real situation on the ground. So as an auditor, you're supposed <laughs> to report on it. So these are desirable, but not compulsory. They are just incidental. They are just incidental. They are desirable, but not compulsory. Then all of them combined, all of them combined, writing a report, management letter, the three E's are what fall under the professional body's objective. This is what is required of us by ISPAC. This is what is required of us by ISPAC. ISPAC requires that we write a report. ISPAC requires that we prevent direct correct errors for the regularities. They expect that we draft a management letter, which is a letter of internal weaknesses. So ISPAC requires us to perform all those functions, requires us to perform all those uh, functions. Any question? Uh, notes before nifute. Yes. So online, if we are screenshotting, you can screenshot. everything that I said. Uh, so if I come up with your category, you can just take a picture. Uh, online, you can screenshot just a minute. I'm giving a minute to screenshot. Your nifute to one so they give as I invite any question. Unaskia aje, ni kama inataka kukubali kueleweka hiyo thing. Yes. Yes. Notes. Uh, notes are available. So many notes. So many notes. I'll scan my notes, my personal class notes I send you. I'll give you a soft copy notes. Yes. I give out so many notes. Plus, it's a good, it's a good concern. Plus, I, I even give some notes in advance. Because yes. and there are some learning friends here will get some extra time to peruse through other topics that I've not covered. 
So it's always prudent that I avail this notes in advance. Yes. Plus answering questions starts after the first topic. So after I'm through with the first topic, you get your past papers. We check how they have they test this topic. It's important. I, I, I don't see the reason why we would wait until the end of the semester. That's when you're revising. It should be a continuous exercise so that you internalize this. So notes, I'll avail them. I will avail them. I will avail them. I will avail them. Actually, in Ville, that's name when we a sana curator results. I try to dictate these notes in class. Yes. But you can imagine if you are dictating 16 topics. How many weeks to exam? Eh? Eight or nine. Eight or nine. So it means we cover a topic per class. A topic per class. Because we are meeting twice per week. We have eight weeks, 16 sessions. Now we want to topics on a topic in and You see? So we'll see Shanghai bonus as we dictate. It will be crisis. Although once in a while, once in a while we can, uh, once in a while we can write something. Once in a while we can write something. But uh, in case of any charge, uh, don't be hesitant. Ah, mimi ndiye huyo hapa. Mimi ndiye huyo hapa. Eh. Just in case. Mm, do you have? Mm, do you have? Make sure uh, we should raise a number of visitors. Okay, the doubt comes because you can try setting an MPS. Yes, if it reads Clement Kenobia, be you do here on young. Yes, you do in your yes. You know you can be you can be chatting with somebody about auditing and they are not understanding because you misspelled a number. You got a number wrong. So we see my can test it out. We wanna in toka jinagani. I love you. Ah, in kwasa wasa. So I can love this. So what do you do with the number? Nimesema nimetuma notes kwa group. Uwezi kaziona. For some reason. Sinambia Clement. Sioni notes. Sinilushia hapa. Mi narusha? Notes. Yes. Ama unasema na mna gani? Ama unaweza kuwa kwamba. Tumemaliza topic. Lakini kuna swali unawana ni yeyo topic. Na uwezi ukajibu. Sinambia Clement. Ebu ni angaria December 2017. Question 3B. Yes. I can always check. Uh, na uweza nika kuangiria. Yes, as in Guinea, we may share in your class, but clearly, does this happen? We may share in your class, it is 6 six twelve. One come on, Akuja, are you coming? Yes, just such uh, such uh, uh, communications. Then, after results, after results, uh, we need to hear a message. Yes, message come again. Yes, message come again. At random, because he just says there are so many. There are so many, I cannot be able to, <clears throat> to save or them. Yes. 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 Can you be able to raise your voice? Ah.
this. So perfect. Auditing and accounting distinguished. Counting and uh, uh, auditing. Distinguished. Counting, of course, this is preparation. Preparation of books of accounts. This one is about examination. Examination of books of accounts. Yes. Number two, we are guided by international accounting standards. Yeah, we are guided by international standards of audit, international standards <laughs> of audit. Here we are, or this can be done by competent, competent accountant. This is qualified, qualified and competent accountant. <clears throat> qualified and competent accountant, qualified and competent accountant. Najua hii kwamba inaweza kosa kuereweka visit. Competent accountant is me and you. We are all competent. Uh, even Kasneba has confirmed that, that you can prepare books of accounts. You can do an income statement. You can do a statement of financial position. They've already confirmed this. So you are competent enough to prepare books of accounts. But qualification, qualifications are enshrined in uh, <clears throat> in uh, section, section 21 of the Accountant Act. That for one to be a qualified accountant, uh, one, you must be, uh, you must be a CPK finalist, registered with the uh, IFAC, registered with CASNEB, possessing at least three years postgraduate experience. Registered with CASNEB, registered with ISPAC, being a CPAK finalist, and three years post post graduate experience. This means that after attaining your CPAK, you've worked in an auditing environment for a period of not less than three years, for a period of not less than uh, <clears throat> three years. Of course, after CPAK, you can just register as an as a as an associate member. So the first two years you are allowed to register with ISPAC as an associate member. Yes. After two years, you cannot register as an associate. So they see your CPA final certificate. So they know when two years expire, you register uh, for full membership. If you wish to practice, that's when you must, uh, you must uh, achieve or attain the requirements of section 21 of the Accountant Act. All right, number four, this is a continuous exercise. It is a continuous exercise. <laughs> number four here, it is periodical. Periodical meaning eh? it, may be a con it may be an interim audit. Yes, it may be a final audit. Sometimes even continuous audits, but uh, planned in a way that it will not interfere with the normal learning. It will not interfere with the normal learning uh, of an organization. All right, number next, number four, may involve different types of information. Number five, may involve different 
types of information. By this we mean EG could be financial accounting, could be management accounting, could be cost accounting, etc. etc. All these accounting, eh? you're discussing accounting, <laughs> financial accounting, management accounting, at this level we have a maze, eh? we have a maze, a management accounting, uh, then cost accounting. Cost accounting is the is a lesser management accounting. Yes, cost accounting is a lesser. It will used to be covered uh, at ATD two and the CPA two. Yes, in the previous uh, syllabus. Whereas the other side, we could be giving different levels of assurances. <laughs> Number five, different levels of assurances. Different levels of assurances. Eh? Remember, our subject is auditing and assurance. And I started by assuring you, number one, we are covering these syllabus together, the whole of it, within the remaining uh, period. Then I've given you an assurance that if you check through this note properly, we are passing. We've seen uh, some people confessing after a long, long period of uh, issues with Kasnevi. Finally, they are able to, uh, to pass. So different levels of assurances. We have like uh, how many levels of assurance? There's four four levels of assurances. It could be it could be an absolute assurance. No, let's not capture absolute assurance because we can't give it as auditors. It should be it could be a reasonable, e.g., reasonable assurance, reasonable assurance, remitted assurance, remitted assurance, or even no assurance, or even no assurance. Those are the three levels of assurances that auditors can be able to give, that auditors can be able uh, to give. This is for internal purposes, yes, facilitate, facilitate decision making by the management, by the management. Then this number six, intended, intended to give the highest, Highest to, to give uh, highest level assurance. Intended to give highest level assurance. Intended to give highest level assurance. Intended to give highest level uh, assurance. Intended to give highest level. So highest level assurance. Ni he reasonable. It's not the highest, but it's the highest that the auditors can give. The highest is absolute. I've not put it there. Yes, I've not put it there because we can't give an absolute assurance. You can't tell someone that these books of accounts are correct. You can only tell them that they are true and fair. Before the end of today's session, I'll explain why we can't be able to give uh, and absolute assurance. These are the differences between accounting and auditing, accounting and auditing. Although this one comes first. This precedes in a tangulia because you can't talk of auditing if there are no books. Yes, so this precedes, eh? then this one is done after accounting. After accounting. It has got some sense, unless you are auditing, even if you have auditing projected figures, budgets, it means it, the budgets have already been drafted and prepared. So they come before, they come before auditing. Auditing comes after you have prepared these books of accounts. What's all about ESAS, International Standards of Audit? I've quoted so many today, and it's our first lesson. Yes, we are guided by ISA during audit exercise. We plan guided by ISA 300. We gather evidence guided by ISA 500. We write a report guided by ISA 700. We've said that uh, auditors do not have responsibilities on errors, fraud, irregularities guided by ISA 240. Lots of ISAs, lots of ISAs. It's them that guides us. What are they? What are they? We say that these are authoritative, authoritative statements, yes, put in place 
by accountancy by accountancy profession they are authoritative they are authoritative statements yes that have been put in place by the accountancy uh profession to be applied during audit exercise to be applied to be applied during audit exercise to be applied during audit exercise to be applied during audit exercise Okay, so I want to my messages. I'm not ignoring the media. Can we get a PDF of this PDF? Uh, Diana, that's very much possible. We have another. Uh, all right, we have a running friend who is saying, uh, I use English. I always read all these comments. Yes, maybe Muhizi Yvonne is not understanding this. So some swahiri i'll try this before this session i was handling forensic audit with guys from gambia gambia you can't speak in english swahili so i had done all my english i'm almost unable to speak english but uh it's okay noted even owner owner is saying i dictate uh, the notes yes will we get these notes after class yes Yes. All right, I, I like checking through so that. Uh, uh, so we're saying that these are authoritative statements that have been put in place by accountants and profession to be applied during audit exercise. You've seen them. Uh, we've actually indicated here that during auditing, we are guided by ESAs. What are the advantages? Advantages of this uh, uh, ESAs, advantages of this ESAs. We have an element of um, consistency and uniformity. Actually, we talk of uniformity. Uniformity and consistency. Consistency is key, as we said that we need. And uniformity, how we do it here, yeah, during audit and accounting when guided by IAS, uh, is the same way that is being done elsewhere. So we are carrying it out in the same way. Yes, you defend yourself in the same way. Next, it is standardizes the audit approach. Standardize the audit approach. It is standardized or they standardize. They standardize uh, uh, the audit approach. Yes, you uh, assist courts in interpretation. Courts in interpretation of auditing, auditing concepts. CC status, when we're reading this, when we're checking through this, when you talk of true and fair view, we are required to get this right. But in courts talk of true and fair view, and these judges, magistrates are not accountants. They do not have accounting background, yes? So understanding this may be very technical. So just like the way we have problems in understanding the provisions of constitution. Yes, you read the constitution, it's making reference to section two, subsection C, you go there, it's directing to elsewhere until at the end of it, it becomes even more difficult to understand what you wanted to get right. The same thing for magistrates and judges. So these ESAs uh, basically assist them to understand lots of this uh, concept. I mentioned about the expectations gap. Yes, so uh, the ESAs are very important to inform the general public on what is all about auditing. Eh? Yes, so we can talk of uh, they are used to reduce Reduce the expectations gap. Reduce the expectations gap or stroke inform informing the general public. The general public. Yes, if it were not for ESAs, there would there could be lots of other misconceptions yes, out there. So the general public uh, get more information. Although sometimes we'll put it as a disadvantage that other times it even widens the expectations gap. Like the way I've, told, I've mentioned, you can read through the constitution 
and it leaves you in bad shape okay than um, before you were there yesterday i was watching what what was i watching yes this uh member of parliament is it from the committee or where wants to make some some changes in in uh in what in some changes in uh crime act the the esc the esc yes is making some statements and uh sometimes you need to open the spiritual eyes and spiritual ears to get right what exactly they are saying you miss out a lot of this yes so this is us if well interpreted they may reduce the expectations gap but to others it may even widen further this expectations gap lastly uh but not least solving solving disputes useful in solving disputes eh? between auditors and clients how some clients may be very mad when they detect some errors which auditors never detected and they are like uh, you are negligent you we will take legal redress yes the auditor can put it's a 240 and we say that it's a 240 is clear and categorical that auditors do not have any responsibility from errors fraud right so they are very they are very useful they are very useful uh Yes, kindly don't forget to share that not the online class have failed to get most of nature and purpose of education. Yes, we had some issues. Sorry for that, Mushimo Samba. For that, uh, Samba. So we can always quote, yes, just like the way when we are faced with issues, some, some um, uh, disagreements, you can quote Bible chapter this verse this, yes, and it remains that's how it is. I was telling you, this is, this is how it is. Yes, others can quote Quran and they prove their point. And so is auditing profession. With regard to disputes, we can always make a reference to solve them and square them uh, when they arise. Excellent disadvantages. Do we have past papers? Let's organize to have the past papers. I like when we write these notes, then I tell you, make reference to this paper. You see how it was tested. They were asking the five points. Now you already have them. Yes, let's look for, but we can do soft copies. Soft copies, eh? You have that link that you click and get those past papers. Ka, 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 ka Google Drive link. Ah, it, it's there. You get all the past papers, whichever year, whichever sitting you wish. Yes? Ah, so if you, I'll share it in our group. I'll share it in our group, eh? If you don't get it, I've already shared my number here. So you'll just uh indicate what exactly i need to send you uh, i'm very active in sending everything that uh you ask because <clears throat> i'm here to make it easy for you all right number one disadvantage number one rigid set of rules very rigid very rigid yes rigid set of rules hence inflexibility 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 we need to be flexible now yes even our plans even when we come up with plans eh? what are plans they guide us sometimes you find yourself going against the very same plans you had laid down because maybe some circumstances some situations have since changed rendering very good plans irrelevant so we can't uh, uh it may not work so well Yes, I'm being asked which group are you referring to today. Uh, I tend to think we have an official group. Are you all in a in a group? Uh, you are. Others are not. Others are not. Yes, it needs to be facilitated by our own uh, Mr. John Mark. John Mark facilitates this. But you have my number now. Yes, then alliance with JM to to make sure that everybody is in a uh, in our official grouping because that's where we make lots of communications uh, through. All right, thanks, thanks. I've noted that. Uh, no KC2, I hope you were able to get my number uh, for this notes I'll be sharing right after this class, right after this class. All right, a lot of workload when you're auditing small companies, additional workload, additional workload when auditing 
when auditing small companies, when auditing small, it's true that you have to be guided by ISA 300 on how to plan, yes, ISA 500 on how, on how to gather evidence, ISA 300 on how to do audit programs. It becomes um, so mechanical. It makes auditing work so mechanical. Yes, coming up with lots of additional workload when you're auditing very small companies where you need may need not to for all uh, all those for all all those uh, uh, procedures. That's number three. Oh, I've even discussed number three together with number two. So number three, Sema, may be followed mechanically. May be followed mechanically. May be followed uh, mechanically. May be followed. Uh, mechanically by audit assistants, by audit assistants, by audit assistants, by audit, and mechanically meaning that eh, it's like the way you may be given an audit, uh, you may be given an event program and you had not been prepared well in advance. It happens that you've attended an event, or your friend's event, MC cannot be traced, they are last seen as when, sometimes back, and now maybe requested, can you take us through this program? And you are saying you've never emceed an event before. You are told, don't you worry, there's a program that you'll follow. Your personal discretion is not needed. So you'll go by the program. That's doing work mechanically. That even if you realize that something was skipped, you don't have a leeway to adjust it like rules and regulations. Rules and regulations dictate the do's and don'ts without any permitted deviation. That's how auditing standards do uh, during audit exercise. And rustry, uh, widening, they may not be understood by the general public. I had already explained that. Yes, may not, may not be understood by the general public by the general public, hence widening, hence widening the expectations, widening the expectations gap. Let me do it again, just in case I've written uh, like a doctor here, may not be understood by the general public, hence widening the expectations gap, <laughs> may not be understood by the general public, hence widening the expectations gap, hence widening the expectations gap, widening the expectations gap. All right, thank you. I think Ona, you've gotten this. Uh, uh, Joyce and Diana, we may not be able to add you immediately because we are getting this conversation on our uh, laptops. Uh, we'll follow up on that. Any questions so far? Users of audited reports. Users of audited reports. Somebody is screenshotting this or taking a picture. So, who are the users of books of accounts? Live around the audited accounts. Who, who, which are these users? Do you list down when you're talking of users of books of accounts? Uh, we are. Uh, everybody can uh, come up with a point. At least uh, management shareholders, lawyers, consultants in general, financial institutions like lenders. Karibu <laughs> Yes, we have other uses. Creditors, excellent creditors, potential investors. Ah, it's true. So we have the existing shareholders and potential shareholders who are potential investors. The government, it's true, and your family. We've interacted before? Somewhere. All right. Ah, excellent, excellent. I don't easily forget. Uh, <laughs> yes, you are very, 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 very 
uh, ah, we have even our, our online uh, learned friends, financial institutions, general public, the government, investors, excellent. These are the answers we are getting. The government, the managers, or these are the intended uses. These are the just maybe even ask those questions, and they give you ten marks. Yes, yes, yes. You give an explanation. I usually say, don't be so mean when you're giving answers. Yes, give all the answers. You'd rather give them excess of what they needed than you give them less because you may not have an opportunity to collect it or they may give you an opportunity to collect it in the next meeting, which you don't want. Yes, don't be mean. Write everything that you, that you know, giving examples. Yes, let me highlight those you. Thank you, thank you, thank you all of us for, for those inputs. See, we have those points. I want to emphasize on something. I want to emphasize on something. Like number one, we have the management. What do you think, uh, what's the interest of management in these audited accounts? Their interest for decision-making purposes, yes? For decision-making purposes. Eh? Plus, remember my agency and stewardship concept. Management are agents. They want to be sure that if the auditor gives a clean bill of health, you know what's a clean bill of health? That the books of accounts portrays to and fair view, then they are very happy. Like the way you send a message and you are given pass, 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 aggregate pass. That's the feedback you're getting that all is fine. You are satisfied that you did it properly, yes? And management is in this very same position that when an auditor gives a tick, they are good to go. Remember their agents, they can always be refreshed by the shareholders if they feel that they are not pursuing, uh, directors are not pursuing the shareholders' interest. It's very important for decision-making purposes. Number two, we have two persons whose interests are the same, the creditors and the renders. So their interest is the same. They want to be sure, uh, a question. Part of management, yes. Is quality management policies, yes. That's a very good observation. And uh, it, it may be discussed under decision making because it is under decision making where you formulate the policies, review the policies, yes, come up with new policies, new plans. That's a very good observation. Yes, it can always be explained that because it is uh, after the books of accounts, they will now see we need to change this policy because it never facilitated achieving of objectives. We need to review it and put it in this manner. A very good observation. So these two lenders are interested with the liquidity, liquidity of the client. Is the client in a position to pay for the goods supplied when they when they fall due? Is the client in a position to repay the loans and their accruing interests as and when they fall due? So they have same interest about the ability to repay, ability to pay the loans. Yes. Number four, you have mentioned about shareholders. What's the interest of shareholders? ROI, ROI, under the ratio analysis. ROI was return on investment, return on investment. They invested their money. They invested their money. They want to assess the aspect of dividends or any capital gain, any capital gain. How do we achieve capital gain after shedding off shares? Eh? Yes, when you sell shares, you get capital gain. Uh, when you still retain the shares, you get some dividends end of the year, yes? Then we have number five, right? investors. Our running friend there has called them uh, potential shareholders or potential investors. They want to assess the viability of the investment. Yes, assess the viability, assess the viability uh, of the investment, assess the viability. Uh, we have a running friend also that mentioned government. Serikali. Nowadays, what we want to eat, Serikali, Zakario. Yes, because of <laughs> taxes, as <laughs> required. Yes, uh, government, because of the fiscal, fiscal and monetary, and monetary policies, e.g. element of tax. Yes, how much tax do they expect to get uh, from different sectors? Uh, they have interest. See, we are fighting returns now. Yes, we are fighting returns. They will always check. Uh, so that they can be able to come up with fiscal and uh, monetary policies. Number seven, eh? 
Number seven, number seven, number seven, we said consultants. Consultants, eh? Our other friend there gave examples of lawyers. Even ourselves, we need these books of accounts as accountants. Accountants, auditors, economics, economy, eco? economists, yes, economists, ETC. All these have got vested, especially when you wish to get an economic advice. Yes, you avail these books of accounts and uh, they, they are able to advise based on tangible, based on tangible uh, evidence. Number nine, eh? number nine, uh, general public, yes, general public, general public, eh? in their usual CSR, corporate social responsibility. Yes, <laughs> general public has interest. This is where we have uh, public like media, politicians, host community, Host community is where these businesses are domiciled. Yes, yes, they have some interests. They have uh, uh, some interests. General public, uh, with regard to their wide corporate social responsibility. Um, and last and number ten, very important, wafanyikazi, employees. You have interests. You have interests here. Which interests? <laughs> Security. Yes, you want to know whether to start looking for green pastures. Yes, to start visiting Great Monday. Yes, because there are no hopes. There are no hopes. Or if there is this stability of the employer and the ability to meet your future, future demands and fewer pays, allowances, and time. We even have customers. Or where are the customers? Customers. Are they create their customers? Hey, they are, there is this interest. You know, customers, what happened? Eh? Sometimes going concern, if going concern of an entity is threatened, you may see so many other businesses whose going concern will be threatened. Yes, because if going concern of a producer is threatened, what will wholesalers be selling? The retailers. It means they're not in business. They are interested. They are interested. Yes. Assume somebody dealing with a uh, MPSA business and Safaricom Corp. Yes, but when the yes, Falcom is making money, is making money, it's still good because you know there, there is future. It's a going concern. Going concern is captured in ISA number 570. ISA number 570. In accounting, is still in IAS number one. We say an entity is a going concern if it, if it will be in operation in foreseeable future. That this business has got no intentions to liquidate, has got no intentions to seek protection from creditors. Yes, then it is a going uh, concern. Advantages of auditing. Ah, excellent. Another point coming. Competitors also, although competitors, can we discuss them in the publics? They are. They are. I was just asking whether they may fit here where we have the media po politician post commit. We discuss them as a separate point. Eh? They have you want to know what your competitor is doing. You by the way, in management, we say we have a theorist by the name um uh, Michael Porter. Michael Porter, for those who covered PUM somewhere or leadership. Uh, Michael Porter discusses um uh the, the, the very generic strategies that we need to come up with. Eh? And below that three generic strategies, you talk of three competitive uh, effects. And one of them is rivalry between competing firms. Rivalry between competing firms. You cannot afford to ignore a strategy put in place by your competitor. It will mean uh, there are some businesses like the newspaper business. Every time nation adjusts their price, standard newspaper adjusts immediately. They are at all times, they are at the same price. Even if they change their price overnight, the other one will still change overnight. You can't afford to ignore what your competitor is doing. Yes. Tambo, uh, even in colleges here, we had uh, uh, some uh, rivalries, competition of, of colleges. Eh? And there's a time, um, one of the colleges, you, all of us will be charging 11,000 shillings per level. How much are you paying now? 15? 18? We used to charge 11. 
all the levels, even section six. Then one of the, one of the competitors said, all right, next semester, uh, I, will, I will introduce Bogov. What is Bogov? Buy one, get one. As he said, I'll charge 10,000 shillings. You register for one section, then the other one I give you for free. So was tight. That was in 2014. That was in 2014. 2013, 14, we were charging 11,000 shillings. So it, it made it that all the colleges sat on a route table and agreed on how much is to charge. Because this guy would have done so because they don't pay rent. They're in their premise. Yes. Yes. So they had to agree. And that's why you'll find like it's like everybody is charging the same fee in the market. Yes. It's, it's, it's very tedious. So competition, competitors. Yes. Competitors have got interest. <laughs> competitors. Compet ah, excellent. Thanks for all those inputs. Thanks for all those 17 messages. Ah, there is the same users of audited reports. Yes, it's the same as users of uh, uh, books of accounts. Yes, and that's correct. Yes, users of uh, audited accounts are the very same users of books of accounts. So that that's covered. That's covered. That is uh, that is correct. So for competitors is to be able to come up with some um, policies coming up with uh, some policies. All right, we look at advantages of auditing. Yes, number one, you are able to detect errors and frauds to detect errors and frauds if somebody never audited then they will not detect it but if they audit it you'll get this right number two expert advice on matters internal control system into brackets ICS. So from today henceforth, I'll be calling it ICS. You'll be getting that this is about uh, internal control system. Internal control system. Or you're able to make informed decisions. Number four, filing, filing tax returns, filing tax returns, or five, uh, accessing, accessing loans from lending institutions, number six, eh? insurance claims. insurance claims it's insurance credibility to ah excellent yes We are boosting confidence with regards to anyone that we're interacting with uh, our stakeholders eh? as enhancers. Stakeholders. You actually even get a lot of respect from other entities. Ah. It is even very useful when business is changing hands. For instance, sale of business, you'd wish to check through the audited account so that you're able to make 
a decision. Yes. Number eight. Useful building patches of a business. Now I've discussed these topics in a funny way because the examiner in most cases will ask you about advantages of auditing to a sole trader, advantages of auditing to a partnership, advantages of auditing to a company. Now, all these advantages cut across, cut across, cut across. So with regard to, with regard to sole trader, remember, sole traders are not expected to audit the accounts. They do it voluntarily. Companies are required by law to audit. But sole traders, they do it for purposes of achieving this objective, these advantages rather. Yes. Otherwise, for sole trader, it will be very important to facilitate. So you'll, tell you, you'll put it like it's number nine, eh? to note that all these apply, but this one is specific to sole trade and not other types of businesses. To facilitate, facilitate administration administration of deceased persons estate to facilitate administration of a deceased person's estate facilitate uh, the administration of a deceased person's estate yes in partnership eh? Or number number nine, we can talk over useful in or during the changes in partnership because changes in partnership arise in what circumstances? As per financial reporting, death, admission, retirement, all those are discussed under changes in partnership. You remember, or oh, you've not done this in financial reporting unless you've already covered it, where we talk of a piecemeal dissolution and dissolution of part. Anyway, it's a valid point, eh? but we can widen it. We can widen it because uh, changes in partnership arise uh, as a result of uh, several factors. So that's for that's for uh, sole trader. So have a subtopic, skip a line. So we have eight points, then subtopic sole trader. We've added the ninth point. Then partnership, partnership point number nine. So it's eight, then number nine for partnership. Number nine uh, for partnership, you can say, facilitates settlement of disputes. Yes, facilitates settlement of disputes among partners. Settlement of disputes among partners settlement of disputes among partners. The point that Tawaran and Freya is saying, uh, useful whenever there is change in partnership. Useful whenever there is change in partnership, e.g. death, Retirement, admission, even changes in profit and loss sharing ratio. Remember those calculations? You handle them here in AFR, those who are yet to do it. Yes, all those changes, they are part of financial reporting. <laughs> yes, useful whenever there is change in the partnership, e.g., death, retirement. There is this partner who is not actively involved in partnership affairs. We refer to them as partner who contributed their money yes silent partners dormant partner and sleeping partner who is that course partner there is a course partner somewhere i can't even myself recall who was this course partner bados 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 alone you check for us who is course partner quasi q q u a s i we need to know this really you never know why your friend has mentioned this. Yes. Quasi partner. Who is a quasi partner? Check who is a quasi partner. Quasi partner. Quasi. Q U 
ASI. Quasi partner. Quasi partner. A quasi partner is someone who works with other, others in a business, but is not really a partnership, but not really a partnership. Let me take it again. Someone who works with others in a business, but it's not really a partner. Uh, oh, it's like a, a joint venture, but this joint venture has since been removed in the syllabus. There's a part, there's a, there's a joint venture discussing financial reporting and a group account. That's, that's uh, guided by IAS number 28. Then we have another joint venture, which is a temporary partnership. It used to be there in section three. It was very nice. It, when you found it in the exam paper, you'd know those are free marks. Yes, those used to be uh, uh, free marks. Uh, so you, one is in partnership, but in a business, but not a partner, a quasi partner. Ah, good, now we know, now we know, now we know. All right, so very important for the partner who is not actively involved in business. So you can put it there as, a, as an advantage eh? that uh, useful for dormant partner or sleeping partner. Useful for dormant partner. Useful for dormant stroke sleeping partner. Dormant stroke. Sleeping partner in ascertainment of partnership affairs. In ascertainment. In ascertainment of partnership. Of partnership affairs. Ascertainment of partnership affairs. And because they're not actively involved, they need to know how it is being learned, what they are able to achieve, not unless they check through. Uh, the audited accounts for a company. Number nine. Do we have a unique one for a company? Yes, we have one unique one. Credibility to shareholders. Credibility to shareholders. Credibility. Credibility to shareholders. And other stakeholders of the company. Credibility shareholders and other stakeholders of the company shareholders and other stakeholders of the company shareholders and other stakeholders of the company very important very important next point very important unique to companies assurance to directors number 10 assurance assurance to directors, uh, I had mentioned this, that if we say the portrait to fair view, it's an assurance to the directors, assurance to directors that they have complied with their statutory responsibilities, assurance to directors that they have complied with their statutory responsibilities, that they have complied, that they have complied with their statutory responsibilities, they have complied with the statutory responsibilities. They have complied with the statutory responsibilities. And the last point, may facilitate compliance. May facilitate compliance. May facilitate compliance with rules and regulations. Number 11, facilitate compliance with laws and regulations affecting the company compliance. Because I say companies are required by law to audit. So by auditing, it's a way of complying. It's, it's an aspect of compliance to the rules and regulations. It's an act of compliance uh, to the rules and regulations all right those are the advantages when we meet on saturday disadvantages of audit on a saturday disadvantages of audit we can't discuss them now because the last disadvantage has got five very critical points that i'd like to uh 
emphasize on. I would like to emphasize on. So our running friend who was suggesting that I dictate, wow, this is the first time I'm doing this without dictating. For, for, and in September, I'll be starting my 22nd year in lecturing. 22, 22 years. I've never covered in such a manner. It's a unique semester. I've never seen, this is the shortest in my history. I'm doing my 21 years at the end of this semester. This is the shortest semester in history. See then, see, we have to handle it in a different way. Yes, different situations requiring different approaches. Yes, because again, it will be sad. It will be sad if we don't complete the syllabus. You can, without creating the syllabus, that's remedy number one to fail. But when you are through the syllabus, at least you are familiar, you're conversant with all the examiner um, is, um, is testing. All right, we stop at that. Thank you so very much for coming over. Thank you for choosing KCE in the light place. How? The WhatsApp group. These, these guys who do the admission at the reception, at the reception, they can facilitate. They can facilitate. They can facilitate. Yes. Well, the signing sheet will do it on, on Saturday. We'll do it on Saturday. So where we for here on number young, we AA, AA evening. What I'll do, I'll have the notes, so I'll just send the notes without checking who is, but you've chatted me, I'll just send the notes very fast, very fast. The link for the first purpose, excellent, I'll do that. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit with us now and forevermore, amen. Blessed evening, be safe, lazima niwe na umbesh, kuna watu waendagi kanisa, tusipoomba hapa, what are you on? Yes. So, uh, where is the brain? See, see, see.